Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Talk. I'm Jonathan Odom, and you might notice I'm not in my usual setup today. I'm beyond excited to introduce to you something brand new and very special. A spin-off series we'll be sharing for the next couple of months. It's called Shop Talk Factory Floor, and in this new mini-series, we'll be learning all about the factory experience at AU. I'm currently in the process of developing this year's product. You'll get a sneak peek of that, but more importantly, I'll show you all the things we learned about designing and manufacturing consumer products over the years. Whether you're a longtime listener or new to the channel, I promise the factory floor will be fresh, interesting, and informative. So grab your headphones or that product design idea you've been stewing on, settle in, and let's get started. So when I, when I first took over this project in 2018, we needed a new product. Um, we had previously had a speaker, which was fun, but we wanted to do something that was maybe a little bit more useful, a little bit more complex, and showed off more Fusion capabilities. So the first idea we had was this air quality sensor, and that's what we ended up going with. Um, the first step was just to get a bunch of sketches on paper. Um, these are different form studies, different things we could do to make this product work. Um, for some reason, we started out thinking of it as something that had this, this form, sort of a drum. I think it's because we wanted to showcase different types of machining, and uh, this would obviously suggest turning. So we went from that to quickly into Fusion, coming up with some concepts that would be options we could kind of workshop uh, and value engineer to try to figure out what would be the most feasible thing we could, we could build. And then we click quickly went from that to rapid prototyping, in this case using uh, the object uh, printer that we had at Pier 9 at the time. So um, SLA printer, or SLS, I forget which, no, I think it's SLA. No, this is a DLP printer, for those of you nerds keeping track. Just to get form factor, to put stuff out quickly, and to try to understand how things might stack and work together. Something we noticed really quickly with this is that when we started talking to the manufacturers, when we started doing some simulation and fusion, we noticed that there was going to be a huge difference between what it takes to make this version, where you've got this continuous curve along the side, these sort of swoopy lines going all the way through, and this version, which is something that's a very straight, uh, predictable form, kind of a drum with some slots in it. Taking these different options into fusion, doing a turning simulation tells you a lot about what it's going to take to make this product. It tells you how much time it's going to take to machine it, what kind of stock you need to start with to be able to come up with the product out of whatever that stock is. And then from that, you can start to value engineer and make choices about what your product needs to be, what it needs to be made of in order to hit it to, in order to hit your cost targets and um, you know, deadlines, right? The problem statement also should should come with this kind of thing, right? So what you're seeing here is graphics. These are explanatory graphics that actually ended up going to the end user so that they could kind of understand what the product is and how it works. But this is also something that's really useful to do for you and your team in the beginning of a project. You want to make sure that you you understand how this thing is supposed to work, how the parts fit together. So you got like an exploded diagram here using uh, fusion drawings. And then some graph, some explanatory graphics explaining how to use the device, right? In this case, the final product was sort of a marriage between those first two options that you saw in the 3D printing example. So we went with a straight, uh, straight profile along the edges, which would, which allowed us to make this out of a single tube. That cut costs way down compared to what it would have cost to make this kind of a, um, you know, a, a swoopy profile on the side. Um, you're wasting less material. The stock you buy is less expensive. Um, but we were still able to have that kind of wavy line, something reminiscent of airflow along the side. And we're pretty happy with the way this thing came out. The next project I did for the factory experience uh, was this badge concept. So. The, the product here, again, same problem statement as before, interesting to assemble without being frustrating. Um, certain number of parts that's manageable, somewhere around 10, um, showing off the different manufacturing methods. Uh, and something we did differently with this project was that we did a whole workshop 
where we did a prototype run of this called like the first sprint if you're thinking about agile product development where we had an event where there were 50 people internal to the company that put the prototype together and, and then gave us feedback on how to improve it so what you're seeing here is uh the the programmed devices after everybody put them together that's why they have all their names and labels on them and stuff using fusion drawings to uh to make again exploded diagrams showing how all the parts go together important for your internal team to understand that but also a way to communicate to uh you know the end user the people that are putting it together something that's a little bit different about this project in particular the the factory experience project and um, most consumer products is that um, the the assembler and the end user are the same person um, there are a lot of kids toys that work like that right where it's like a you know a kit that you put together and the thing's got to work in the end um, those same considerations would come into that but um, we're lucky enough in this case that those two people being the same person gives us feedback both on the usability and likability of the device and the, uh, the, the technical aspect of how easy is it to put together. Is it too easy? Is it too hard? Is it just right? You're, you're looking for that Goldilocks zone with this product. Um, you also don't want to rely too heavily on the instructions, but at the same time, the instructions need to be there to prevent people from making mistakes. <laughs> but a huge part of this project, a huge part of this concept is um, this concept called Pokey Oak, which I believe Toyota came up with in the 70s, where you make it so that every part fits together only in one way, and it makes it impossible to, dis to assemble the device the wrong way. So there are keyways, there are shapes that are, that are uh, irregular that um, keep the person putting it together from doing it wrong. Uh, so even if they're not really paying attention to the instructions, uh, they're, they're moving through in a way that, that makes it work. Then from that concept, um, you know, again, going very early from sketches to uh, to this phase of the project, moving on to uh, the next phase, which is um, getting away from the from the prototyping uh, circuit board and designing your own, and then honing in on what this product is supposed to do. So in this case, the the badge product um, was supposed to interconnect with other devices and be modular in the long term. The idea, anyway was that you'd be able to put the, your device together with somebody else's. You'd be able to play Pong back and forth, pass information back and forth like, a, like an address book, and then expand it for accessories. So you could have a fan, you know, maybe you're at a conference that's kind of hot, you, you attach that, and this is using your power source from the device. You could have a game controller. So now you have A, B buttons and a joy pad, and you can play games on it. And then you might have a air quality sensor. So going back to our first product, um, they're just using that same device that's inside uh, this electronic component in here, where that would just plug into your device. And now you've got an air quality sensor that gives you a readout. Um, so the idea was that we would keep using this and then expand to these other products. We ended up not doing that because, um, you know, we did, we decided that people might be interested in something else. And, uh, you know, best laid plans of uh, mice and men, I guess. But um, that brought us to the next product, which was the keypad. So we did two different versions of this one. We did one in 2023, one in 2024. Again, starting with sketches for the, for the concept, just to kind of get some stuff down on paper and try to understand uh, what the device should look like. From there, we were able to quickly go into Fusion and uh, work on the form. In this case, working on the form is a fairly straightforward thing to do because you're working with a form factor that's kind of already made for you. This is a prototyping board from Adafruit, uh, and it had a screen on here that I had to peel off for you know prototyping or something. But um, the switches, the placement of those switches, that's not going to change. We know what that's going to be, so that's baked in. Um, the encoder right here is vertical, and I didn't like the idea that you might be using this as a, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Using this as a shortcut device, and then you have to take your hand off and then start tweaking this knob to make that useful. Um, I thought a better form factor, factor would be for this to be horizontal. And that way you could uh, type and then just roll your finger on it without really moving, without changing your gesture too much. So less uh, kind of, um, less friction between those two use cases. So this is the, that first version of that device where you can see, actually let's go back to the electronics. So you can see here on the, on the PCB, 
that we had Adafruit make us a special one that's got a cutout over here, and then this is horizontal. So we're able to move that easily. Um, and then the form factor for putting the thing together, again, is fairly straightforward because it's it's so constrained by what the product already has to be. And then the latest version of this is, um, you know, very similar, right? We've gone from uh, from this version to this version, but along the way, the concept has developed because we're able to take the feedback we got from this, how this thing went together, uh, and that informs our new design. So the concept evolves over time and hopefully improves. In this case, the improvement here was uh, fewer parts, easier to put together, um, and, and much more elegant, in my opinion. Uh, we actually got a real industrial designer to do this instead of relying on me to monkey around with the CAD. So thanks, Jeff Smith, for, for taking this one on. But um, some very subtle changes making it just much more uh, much better proportioned and just yeah, more aesthetically pleasing at the same time as being a little bit more comfortable in your hand. All right, so we've dimmed the lights so you can more easily see the iPad. The glare was kind of becoming a problem. So hopefully this is a little easier to see as I explain what this product is. So I'm really excited about this year's product. Um, this is something we worked on with RIT, the Rochester Institute of Technology. They got a bunch of groups of students together, came up with some really cool concepts for us, and they're kind of acting as our design studio now. So they did a lot of the modeling work for this to kind of get it started. We're kind of taking it to production now, um, but it's a really cool device. So uh, this little arm feature right here is a, uh, it's, it's a protractor. So that's gonna give you a digital readout of whatever the angle is on the screen. Uh, there's going to be a spirit level, so if you lay this thing on a surface, it'll tell you level in two dimensions. It's got a, if we go around to the back, there's a couple sensors. There's a distance sensor uh, that gives you, uh, you know, so you can measure a room. And then there's also a color sensor, and you can place that on any surface and click one of the buttons, and it'll give you an RGB readout of whatever that color is. It, we're using uh, CNC machining for the arm. Uh, injection molding for the enclosure. There's a there's a top and a bottom here. Uh, there is um, there are these three buttons for controlling everything. Uh, those are going to be 3D printed, and there's also going to be an interface part here uh, that's also going to be 3D printed, probably using SLS. Um, on site, we'll have some other manufacturing methods going, so we may have different versions of these parts. There's a metal additive version of this we're working on. So again something that's got to be modular, having different kinds of uh, different kinds of manufacturing showcased in one object. And the injection molding, just a quick shout out to the design extension infusion, um, that makes this a lot easier to deal with things like draft angles and bosses and all the things you need to make an injection molded part. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time when we talk about electronics.